let's start again. So imagine I have I one to n psi by, by magnitude. Okay, I can estimate this by Cauchy Schwarz inequality. I equal to one to capital N magnitude of x i square raised to one half n sum of i equal to one to capital N magnitude of y i square raised to one half n. This is what that I would like to do. And I know that since x and y are um, what do you call a square summable, so this guy must be finite. This guy must be finite. In other words, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, this guy must be finite. R, 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 I can estimate this by uh, I equal to one to infinity psi square one half and i equal to one to infinity magnitude of y i square one half. Agree with me that this must be true? Okay, because so so that's a finite number of you know positive, positive terms and that's an infinite number of positive terms. Okay? And since you know x and y are square summable, so this guy makes sense. Okay? This guy makes sense. And this must be a fixed number. Okay, so if this is finite, so I can say that. Imagine that this is what you call uh, a fixed number. Is okay. how should I proceed now? How can I turn? So this, you see, our our real task is actually to. Um, show that this sum makes sense. Okay. So, what should I do? In a product with itself. In a product with itself. What should be the next system? In other words, how, how can I turn this n into infinity now? Do I have some argument in some real analysis? That can that can kind of Limited. allow us. M is less than uh -huh. what do you mean by that? I mean you're saying the N limit limit. Partial limit. Partial. Why you are allowed to take that limit? Why that limit exists? You see so these are partial sums actually. These are partial sums of the series. Okay. So if these are partial sums, okay, then for the for the sake of uh, uh, convergence of the corresponding infinite series, we need to show that these partial, you know, the the sequence of partial sums is converging. So the question is, why does it converge? Do you have any result in mind that kind of allows you to have this convergence for sure? Okay. Is monotonic and it is bounded. 
So if, if a sequence is increasing, increasing and it's bounded above, and it's bounded above yeah. then it must converge. Yeah. And it must converge to its supremum. Okay, this is what that monotone convergence theorem is telling you. Number one, we, we see that it's bounded. The sequence of partial sum is bounded. Is it increasing? Why is it increasing? You take n to n plus 1, the previous sum is going to be smaller than this new, the new sum actually. Okay, so it's increasing as well. So in other words, this sequence of partial sums is bounded and increasing, so therefore it must converge to a supremum. And that supremum must be on what? This is what you call a capital N. And hence, you know, this guy, this is what you call uh, uh, product, it makes sense. Is it making sense? Uh, we, should, we should have a plus here, right? No, sir, you're doing it for the second claim you're doing right now. What do you mean, sir? Inner product. Right? You're doing this. Uh, am I doing something stupid? Ah, okay. Okay. Alright. Alright, so, so, so in other words, what does this show? that this guy i equal to 1 to infinity xi yi bar okay makes sense so it, it obviously it must be less than or equal to m so it must be finite okay why because this is supremum of such partial sunset so the supremum must be less than or equal to what you call the bound up any bound Okay, so this makes sense. Okay. If this makes sense, we can say that this, you know, this this series, you know, converges. Okay. So, so in other words, this this uh, what do you call uh, norm makes sense. Inner product makes sense. This inner product makes sense. It converges. It exists. Okay. It's not something that it doesn't exist. It exists. All right. So, so if it exists, just check it now for yourself. That so, see, this is an important thing that when you are defining a norm or an inner product, it should make sense. It's not like you know you define it for you know the way you want. Okay, it's fine that you are allowed to define things the way you want. But it's necessary that they should make sense. Okay. In other words, now I can talk about such kind of this. Okay. So the inner product makes sense. Uh, uh, scalar multiplication is pretty pretty simple. If if you are interested, in, next time I'm interested in that. Why this guy is a vector space? Okay. So scalar multiplication is pretty simple. In other words, if you take a, a square sum of the sequence and you multiply it with this, uh, what do you call a scalar, you know the, the new vector, this is scaled vector, is still going to be square sum. Okay, it's still going to be square sum. So you have to prove it for yourself. But the but the, the, the interesting thing is going to be to prove or see that why. Um, some makes sense. Okay. Why, is, why do you think that some makes sense? X plus Y would be. Okay. In other words, so we have proved the, the inner product now. Yeah, yeah. What we proved is that inner product makes sense. It makes sense for a square sum of two squares sum of. So what we want to do next is that addition. How addition makes sense actually? In other words, if I take x and y from L2, is it true that x plus y also be in L2? Mm -hmm. By our definition. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, the trick is so, uh, particularly sum of the square is less than the square of some mm -hmm. trick should Sum of the square is the square of sum is less than or equal to sum of the squares. Mm -hmm. So that sh trick should work on this. Maybe. 
You want to give it a try? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, so give it a try. Give yeah. it a try for yourself. Okay. No. So you got this. No. Nice that. So one hint is this. One crucial hint is this. You can't directly talk about the convergence of the sum. You can. Okay. What you have to do? What what you have to do essentially is to play the same trick. That do your analysis for finite things. Okay. And then you know generalize it. Already, you know, kind of roughly take the limit. So give it a try. Give it a try. Okay. The next thing that I would like to define, I would like to do lots of examples of that, is what we call a norm space. Alright? So so far what we have saw that every inner product, not every, but okay, every inner product gives rise to a norm. But I'm going to show you some examples that if you define norm as an independent entity, then there are non spaces which are not in the product. Okay. So, so the converse is not necessarily true unless the parallelogram law is true. Define is long distance. So it's called a norm. to calculate the size of elements of vector space. So you may choose that your fashion okay, to compute the size of elements of vector space. Okay? But that fashion must have some properties. Okay? So what's a normal space? <coughs> so what we are assuming is this that let E be a linear space or a vector space. Okay? Let E be a vector space. Can you postpone this discussion for some time? Yes. You can have afterwards. Okay. So it's a vector space over a field K, where K could be again R and C. So it could be real numbers and X. So a map, okay, which is what we call the notion of size. Okay. So it's like a, a map which is called norm with a map from vector space into K. Okay. It's called norm on E is norm on E if if following properties are satisfied. Number one. Okay. So the norm of any vector must be non-negative. So it's like the size of everything must be non-negative. It's really analog to what you call absolute. And if something has a zero norm, zero size, then it must be the same as zero. Okay? So there's nothing which is not zero can have zero size. And the third is that if you scale a vector, okay, so it's like you scale a vector and compute norm, it should be same as compute norm and then scale. Okay. 
Okay, so this process of scaling plays nicely with uh, with, with the norm. Okay, so it's like scale and norm are norm and scale actually. Okay, so it must be absolute. Where this, these lambdas are from the edge. Okay, and the third thing that you must need is the triangle inequality. Okay. So, huh? um, so if I have V1 plus V2, it can be estimated by the norm of V1 plus V2. Okay? So V1 and V2 are on the vector space. Okay? So if you have a vector space, and a map which has all these four properties, you're going to call that vector space with this norm as norm the space. Okay? Uh, some people like to call it linear space. So norm is more fashionable. You know, some oldies still call it linear space. Okay. This, this property is also called sometimes homogeneity property. And it really is homogeneity. Homogeneity side. This is like the process of scaling down the vector is a homogeneous the process with respect to scaling down. So what would be the what would be the trivial example that we have uh, uh, that we have covered you know, of normal space is that every inner product of space is a normal space. Okay? Because we, we have proved all these identities for the all inner product of space. Okay? So the inner product of space is a normal space. But you know, there's a beautiful result to say that converse is not necessarily true unless you have a normed space in which the parallelogram law is true. Okay. Then you can go back with it. Parallelogram law was that if I have Norm of what was parallel the number? Yes. S plus G square. square is same as uh, S plus F minus G square. Huh? Plus, ah, plus F minus G square. So this plus is two times. times. Two times or four times? Four times. Four times. So the real part of F. Polarization. No sir. No sir. Two times of F square. Two times of F square. You need to recall the chapter one. So, okay. So, let's talk about some of non-trivial examples of norms. Okay, that we are interested in. So, see, keep this dictionary or your library of these examples updated. Actually, so we we found two basic examples in, of in a product space and you know, last. Uh, chapter, but you saw some new kind of inner product spaces in, in exercises actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which is which is also important to keep in head actually. And then we saw the inner product space uh, of square sum of those sequences. Okay, and those also becomes the examples of mount spaces as well. So now I would like to go for uh, a particular kind of. Uh, among the spaces. So here's an example. Now, so imagine I have an omega which is a non empty set, okay, with you know not necessarily any structure. So I map F from omega into the K. 
the least upper bound. Huh? The least upper bound. Okay. So, so this could be a good idea. So, so what you do is that you take all images. So it's like I take the image set of F. Okay. Not image set really, but collection of you know absolutes of our magnitudes of images. Okay. And uh, take a supreme form. Okay. Then so here's a question. Why this supreme must exist? So if it is bounded, why this supremum should exist? So it's a pretty nice Sir, test because of these are uh, these are real numbers, okay. and real number is least upper bound property. That's that's what essentially that we are going to say. So this is what do you call uh, a bounded above set? So by the least upper bound property, the supremum must exist. So can we define it this way? Uh, this minimum or the infimum of set where set contains these upper bounds C, C of F. Yes. Yes. Okay, so it's okay, so it's precisely the same thing. So you're not doing anything. Else. Are you getting the point? Is it making sense? So it's, it's pretty much important that you shouldn't just blindly define something. You should know that why that thing exists. Okay? So this exists. Why does it exist? That there's a bounded above set. And if it is bounded above set by least of a bound property. Every bounded above set must have a supreme. Okay? And this this infinity norm is also called sometimes supreme norm. Okay? It's also called supreme norm. So, you know, just, just try to verify that why these properties must be true, I think it's not a big thing. Okay, we, have, we have done you know, similar kind of things in real analysis. So, it's verify, verify that it's a norm. So, this is a norm actually, it satisfies all four. 